Welcome back, everybody. It's Dr. Craig Malkin. I'm a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism. It's devoted to helping you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all your relationships. Today, I want to talk about whether or not manipulation is conscious for people who are extremely narcissistic. And even if it is, what can you do? If you like my videos, please remember to subscribe by turning the notification bell on so you can see them when they come in. And don't forget to like and comment so we can build on the conversation and have this ongoing discussion. So the question is, are narcissists aware or extremely narcissistic people aware when they're being manipulative, aggressive, or they're being reactive in conversations in a way that have a really deep impact on the person that they're interacting with, often in ways that feel very uncomfortable or, or painful? Are they aware? And the answer is sometimes. So if you look at the diagnosis, for example, of narcissistic personality disorder, you will see listed as one of the potential criteria an exploitative interpersonal style. And it's not really clear from the description whether or not they mean it's conscious or unconscious that is this person aware. But we do know from the research that the more extreme these traits like narcissism, psychopathy, traits of histrionic personality disorder, the more these traits become intense, the more rigid the character armor, the, the thicker the character armor, if you will, the more likely it is that they will engage in more consciously exploitative behavior. So that's the first answer. But you should also remember that if you're looking at how the diagnosis for narcissistic personality disorder works and how we've come to understand really what extreme narcissism is, it's mix and match for these criteria. So a person doesn't necessarily have to have an exploitative style to be narcissistic, whether it's conscious or unconscious. But there are two other ways that this happens too that you should be aware of if you struggle with narcissism and the people around you, anybody who's watching this who deals with somebody who's extremely narcissistic, I want you to be aware of that are more along the lines of kind of a side effect of the ways that somebody has had to cope who develops extreme narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder. And the first is in the instance where somebody has experienced abuse themselves, very often what happens is that they have this relational template, this pattern where so often they were in the position of when they were vulnerable, they would be hurt, attacked, put down, that there's one of two positions in any kind of vulnerable interaction. You can be the victim or you can be the aggressor. And of course, given our druthers, we'd rather be in a more powerful position. As kids are developing, one way that they might cope with the fears that, that come up around an interaction like that is to eventually adopt that more aggressive, powerful position. If there's a manipulator and a manipulated, then I'd rather be in the position of being the one who's doing manipulating. This is also called identification with the aggressor. It's very quick, it's reflexive, it is not conscious. It's at the first inkling uh, of something vulnerable happening in interaction. Say it's a discussion of a mistake, or it's a conversation about difficult feelings, fears, at the first inkling of those kinds of feelings, very reflexively, there's a turning of the tables. And it's an imaginary table, of course, because nobody really needs to be a victim or nobody needs to be in that position. But if that's your only template, that you can only be in one role or the other, you're much more likely to choose that more powerful role. And that's what happens in this instance. Another way that this plays out, though, is, again, because of this intolerance for more vulnerable experiences, very reflexively, uh, somebody who might be extremely narcissistic, as soon as they start to feel uncomfortable, unsure of themselves, they have to disown that. And it's like a switch being flipped. I'm not the one who doesn't know what they're doing. I'm not the one who isn't the wrong here. You are. And that can feel very manipulative when you're on the receiving end of it. But really what's going on there is, again, it's what I call a vulnerability dodge plus self-enhancement where this person is trying to prop themselves up as, as being in the know. This is not 
something that they might explain, even if somebody who's extremely narcissistic knows they do this, they don't know why they do it. They're not going to say, I'm making myself feel big and more important than you so, and making you feel small so I can feel better about myself. That's just not how it works. So these are two other examples where this kind of manipulative behavior, this kind of exploitative interaction isn't conscious at all. So what happens when you see it? Well, if you're aware of it in yourself, and a lot of people who have narcissistic personality sort of have found me and they watch my videos, what you want to start to do is clue into the fact that there is a vulnerable feeling underneath. This is hard. This takes work. You got to roll up your sleeves. You got to work with somebody. You got to work with a skilled psychotherapist who can help you do that. If you're on the receiving end, if you have this question, is it conscious or is it unconscious? The answer is who cares? It doesn't matter. The real question here that you want to answer is, as always, am I safe? Whether somebody is intentionally acting in a way that makes you feel small or takes advantage of, of how you're feeling or unintentionally doing it, the impact is the same. And certainly it's within reason and you can you, you can take this stance of some kind of empathy of recognizing that this is something that they developed as a survival strategy, but you still have to protect yourself. So regardless of the source, if you're on the receiving end of this, the answer is protect yourself work on those boundaries, set limits. At the very least, even if it doesn't feel safe to express them directly, as I often say about adaptive or healthy anger, it doesn't always work well in a relationship with somebody who struggles in this way. At least have it for yourself as a guide to holding your center and keeping boundaries, regardless of whether or not the person you're interacting with is conscious of what they're doing. It really doesn't matter. So I hope you found that helpful. If you do, remember to like and comment and I'll be sharing more.